Shalom. My name is Adam Wasser from Crown Heights, Brooklyn, New York. This week's Torah portion, the Parsha Truma, means contribute. We asked the question of why should the Jewish people have to give Truma? Why should they have to give belongings and personal things to build the Mishkan, the tabernacle? We learned that somebody who does a mitzvah should do it wholeheartedly. They should do it with their heart. By doing a mitzvah, is doing it wholehearted. But if somebody does it with the intentions of trying to gain something from it or looking good, it is only a part of a mitzvah. It is not a complete mitzvah, but nonetheless it is a mitzvah. We learned that there were some people that did not want to give their truma to build the Mishkan, and people had to go and collect the money, money collectors. We learned that these people who, get, who, who went to collect the money, they received the mitzvah, and by them receiving the mitzvah, everyone got the mitzvah, even if they didn't do it wholeheartedly. Most of the people, thank God, did want to give their truma wholeheartedly. We learned that everything belongs to God. You and I are beings of God. We, are, we, we own. You know, God owns us. When God says, give me, what does that mean? Contribute to me. Truma. If it already belongs to God, then what is there to give? It already belongs to Him. God wants us to understand the meaning of charity. He wants us to understand the meaning of, of wanting to do something for somebody else. In the example that a child, everything a child owns belongs to their parents. But when a child gives a gift to their parent, it's special, it's unique, even though that gift belonged to the parent. Whatever the child has belongs to the parent, but by the child giving, taking the effort in giving that parent something, it becomes special, it becomes from the child. And the idea here is that even though it belongs to God, the jewelry, the fashion wear, the diamonds, the pearls, the silk that, that the Jewish people contribute to build the Mishkan, even though it belonged to God, by them giving it over wholeheartedly, it was like a present that a child gives to a parent. We learn that the Jewish people brought wood with them to build the Mishkan, that they turned into beams. We learn that when Jacob, Yaakov, settled in Egypt, settled in Mitzrayim. He planted trees from Israel. We learn that when you settle down in a home, when you own a home, when you build a home, one of the things you should do is plant a tree because the tree symbolizes belong ownership. So when the people settled in Goshen, they planted, Yaakov planted these trees. These trees also were a representation of their slavery, that every time they saw these trees, they were reminded of their redemption, they were reminded of their ancestry. And when they left Mitzrayim, when they left Egypt, they took these trees with them. They, they cut them down they, and they took them. These trees planted 200 years ago. They, they, they were let, taken out and they went wherever they went in the desert. We learn that the Jewish people built the Mishkan out of silk, animal skins, and, uh, and these beams of wood. We learn in Hasidus that the beams are like a representation of a human being. And in fact, the whole Mishkan, the whole tabernacle itself is the representation of a human being. And the idea that the top of the beam is the head, the middle of the beam is the body, and the feet of the, of the beam is the, is the person's legs. Now, if you take this beam and you do nothing with it, then it's worth nothing. It, it's just sitting there, collecting dust. But when you make something out of it, you make it a part of something else, it becomes worth something, it becomes valuable, it becomes meaningful, just like a human being. Somebody who does nothing with their life and just sits around and does nothing, what are they? They're, they're worth something, but not their potential. When you learn Torah, when you do mitzvahs, when you contribute and give tzedakah, you become something. You become part of a whole. This is the idea of the Mishkan, is that all these pieces were valuable, but they weren't valuable in the sense of real value. But when they were brought together, the silks, the, the, the animal skins, the beams, they were brought together in one whole body as a symbol of upliftingness. We also learn that what was more important? Why do we have to learn about the Mishkan? Why do we have to learn about the tabernacle? Something that was only around and used during the time of the, of the Jewish people being in the desert and at the beginning stages of being in, uh, in Eretz Israel, they used the Mishkan for a few years. But nonetheless, what is the significance that we sh must learn this after 3,000 years later? The Mishkan, like I said, is a representation of the human being. Now look at ourselves. 
living in exile, living in diaspora, living in a world where we're completely surrounded by materialism and the wanting to do things that God necessarily doesn't want us to do. But yet, when we learn Torah, when we do mitzvahs, when we remind ourselves of giving charity and doing what, what is right in this world, we become a mishkan, we become a temple. We learn in Judaism that we are all temples of God. We are all mishkans, and when we do Torah and mitzvahs, we become holier, we become greater, we become vessels of life. <coughs> the mishkan, when we learn about the mishkan, and we take Hasidus, and we learn about the Hasidus of the Mishkan, we find ourselves, we find our purpose in life, we find a meaning of what is important to have unity, have family, have belonging. The Mishkan is more than just a structure that is taken down and put up again in the wilderness. It is a representation of us living in the wilderness, going down, coming up again, building ourselves up, creating a future. The Mishkan was was a place of vessels. We learn in this parsha truma of the vessels, the 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 oil lamps and the and the uh, menorahs and and the incense and and the ark of the covenant that was placed inside it. Like I said, the mishkan is a body of a man, body of a woman, the individual. When you do mitzvahs, when you do charity, when you do these things that are right by by God, you bring things into your life. You bring. Uplift, upliftingness and gifts of praise inside you. These vessels that were brought inside the body of the Mishkan are those mitzvahs, are that representation of lifting oneself up. It's interesting that when we start off with this parsha, we talk about the Ark, and the Ark being made of gold with, uh, with angels or um, on top, however you want to look at it, with faces of children and that the, the outside of the ark is, uh, is gold, while the inside of the ark is wood. This is also another significant idea of, of the individual, that on the outside we are one thing, but it is truly what is on the inside that counts. On the inside of the ark was the Ten Commandments, the, 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 the luchos. Also inside were, were certain other, um, like the oil that, that knights the king, and, and so forth. These were the things that were most important, not the outside of the Mishkan, but the inside. That's why it was covered in wood on the inside, to show the humbleness, to show the importance of, of what matters on the inside. You can look good, you can be beautiful on the outside, but really, truly matters what is on in the inside that matters. You can have all the money in the world, it doesn't matter. What matters is what's in your heart. I respect and love this Parsha. And for the next three, four parshas, I believe we'll continue to talk about the Mishkan and the significance of the beauty and the Hasidus of, of it rep being a representation of, of who we are and what we can become. I, I see life as a, something that is positive. When somebody says most people in the world are bad, I say most of the people in the world are good because God has a mission for all of us. All of us have a destiny in life, but those destinies are positive destinies. Now, yes, you could say, Hitler, Hamak Shemoy, what positive being can we get from this? What, what, how can it be? Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon destroyed the temple. What benefit of beauty can there be out of this? Of course, they were evil, evil, wicked people. But, through the Holocaust, we gained the state of Israel. We become more unified as Jewish people. We found a belonging in the understanding that Jews are Jews no matter what. Whether we be religious or secular, we're all one family. A sense of unity. And however you want to take that. But there are positive things that happen after the Holocaust. And when you look at Nebuchadnezzar, and you see that the, uh, the temple was destroyed. But out of that, we learned more respect. We learned humility of the importance of of why it was important to have the of the the, um, the base of Megdash and being unified. There were positive things that we drew out from from Nebuchadnezzar. We must always find the positive in the negative. If we only see the negative and never the positive, then it will always be a negative. To turn the negative into a positive creates the negative into a positive. Our lives are like this. Our lives are shaped in the idea that there are challenges and struggles before us. We all live in the desert of Sinai. But there is a redemption. There is the idea that the promised land is ahead of us. And by always being uplifted, by always rebuilding the Mishkan, in the idea that today we build it, tomorrow we travel, and then we rebuild it again. 
Step by step, we will reach that promised land. Step by step, we will reach our goals. Never giving up. Always finding the beauty, even in the darkest of places. This world is created by God. Every single inch of it, every single speck, even the word, is God. Within evil, good can be found. The Jewish people went into the desert, into the Sinai, for many reasons, one of which they needed to realize the importance of why it was important to be Jewish, why it was important to believe in God, why was God even meaningful to them, what was the significance in believing in God. By being in the desert, they humbled themselves, they learned about one another and about God. They found humility, and they achieved their goal and their success in reaching the promised land of Eretz Yisrael. If there's anything that we can learn and take out of this Parsha, it is the idea of renewal, of of change and rebuild and rebuild and over and over again, never stopping, always pushing, never giving up. The Mishkan, like I said, is a representation of the individual. Every inch of it, the the curtains that connected the beams, the beams being people, the curtains being that connection between one another. I wish everyone a wonderful and happy week. God bless you all, and Mashiach now. Amen.